Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and what I got for you in this review is the Venus Optics Lawa Argus 35mm f0.95 lens. Now this is a fully manual, full frame lens coverage optic, and it's made for the Sony E mount, the Canon RF mount, and the Nikon Z mount. It goes for about $899 US, and let's just get right into it. All right guys, so here she is in my hands, and as you can see, she is a beaut. It's not exactly small, it's a pretty beefy lens, and it has this nice pinch style lens cap. So we'll take that off so you can see the front lens element. It has a 72 millimeter filter thread on the front, and it comes with this nice lens hood that you can take off if you want to. I'm just gonna leave it on for now. And just check that out, it says it right there, Argus FF2, 35 millimeter F0.95. That's an extremely fast aperture lens, and one of the reasons why this lens weighs what it does. You can just see how big that glass element is on the back, which is unbelievable. It's monstrous. And this is nice all-metal lens bayonet, very well made. So this is a fully manual lens, don't forget, and it has this click and declick switch for the aperture. So right now, the aperture is a clicked. And it's a very soft click, by the way. It's not a hard click. Or you can turn the click off and get a nice smooth aperture throw. It has a huge focus throw, as you can see here. I mean, you rotate the lens around and around and around. It's almost like 360 degrees. Not quite. It's like 280 degrees or so. And because there's such a long focus throw, that gives you incredible control when it comes to manually focusing, like really dialing it in to get the focus absolutely perfect. It's very easy on this lens, as I'll show you in a minute, due to this unbelievably large focus throw. And the focus ring feels like absolute butter. Now this is a top quality optical lens. It is fully manual, so it doesn't have electronics, but the optics in this lens are super high quality, as is the build quality and design, as you can see here. It just, it's all metal, feels brilliant in the hands, and it also has a 15 blade aperture diaphragm that you can see down there. And if I open up the aperture, you'll see it open up right there, like so. Now this lens weighs in at 26.6 ounces or 755 grams. So that is pretty heavy. Uh, it's not quite two pounds, but it's quite a bit. It goes from F0.95 all the way to F16. It has 14 elements in nine groups. It has a minimum focus distance of 19.7 inches or 50 centimeters. So that is not the best spec pretty far from your subject. So minimum focus distance is not really the greatest on this lens. Let me show you what this looks like mounted up to my Sony a7C, which is what I tested this on. And there you have it. So that's what she looks like mounted to the Sony a7C. All right, so I'm gonna go into the menu on the Sony a7C and I wanted to show you how I have the focus set for manual focus because there's a couple features in here that you wanna set for sure. And right here, peaking setting, I have that off right now. And I'm gonna show you that in a minute, what that actually does. But what I wanted to show you was, if you go in here to the custom keys, custom key right there, if you go in there, right now you could see here three, which is the center button on the back of the camera, I have set to focus magnifier. Now this is photography custom key mode. So if I go back, I can now go to video custom key mode, as you can see here, and that is set to what photography mode is set to. So in both modes, if I press this center button, I'm gonna get a focus magnify. And I'll show you what I mean, watch this. If I press this center button here, see that little box that came up? That's the focus magnify. And if you click again, it'll zoom in for you. So that's gonna give you a nice focus magnify preview. Now I'm actually too close to my laptop for it to focus on the screen right here, but I'm gonna show you this in more detail in a second in the real world, so don't worry about that. All right guys, so here I am behind my Sony a7C and I have my mountain bike in the background and you can see right now I'm focused on my handlebar and I'll show you what the video footage of this looks like as well once we're done recording. But what I wanna show you is that magnify zoom feature I was telling you about, watch this. If I hit that center button on the back of the a7C, remember I have it set to magnify zoom. And if I zoom in there, I can now see what I'm looking at. So now I'm looking at the front and I can see I'm focused on the brake. I'm looking good there. But what I want to actually focus on is the background there. So watch this. 
I'm focused on the break. Let me just dial it in a little bit, make sure it's perfect, right like that. Let me hit the menu button and I'm gonna to go to peaking settings and I'm gonna put on the peaking settings. Let me show you that. So I'm gonna turn that on like so. And now, if you look, you can see the red there on the break. So I'm just gonna turn the focus so you can see the red show up. See that red? That's how you know that's focus peaking. So it's telling you where the high contrast area is, which is actually where the focus is. So that's how the peaking feature works. I'm just gonna change it to low so there's not so much of it. And it'll be a little bit more precise. All right, so let me zoom in now so you can see that in closer detail. Now, you could see that there's like little marching ants and those are the focus peaking. See how they show up right there? So that's how you know you got the focus set correctly. Well, when you're using manual focus with the Sony cameras, it's a really great feature. Now watch what happens when I hit record. It's recording, and now while recording, I can still zoom in. So check this out. Now this is gonna cause some camera shakes, so I'm not gonna use this particular section, but what I wanna do is I wanna change the focus so this area is in focus while I'm recording. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the lens focus ring and there you have it. And you can see the focus peaking now on the back. And I'm recording this whole time. So now I can stop recording. And I'll have that segment from the back to the front now as a sequence. And I'll show you what that looks like. So that's pretty much how easy it is to just dial in the focus with this lens. And like I said, because it has such a long focus throw, it's really, really easy to get it absolutely perfect. And then when you combine that with focus magnify and focus peaking, I mean, it's like a no brainer. So don't think you can't get killer photos and video with a fully manual lens because it's really easy when you use tools like this built into the Sony cameras. All right, so here we are in Adobe Lightroom. Now, because this lens is a fully manual lens, you are not gonna see the EXIF data up here as far as aperture goes, but you will see shutter speed and ISO. I was pretty much shooting wide open most of the time, but I did have to stop it down just when it was extremely bright out because I wasn't using an ND filter. So you can see I'm maxed out at 1 4,000th of a second on my A7C, that is the fastest shutter speed it offers and here's a shot of Jace. So I had to stop it down to like F1.4 for this shot. F0.95 was just too fast of an aperture for this lighting conditions without an ND filter. But just take a look how good this came out. I mean, this is an excellent shot. Nice little portrait, background blur. It's got some nice 3D pop to it. Now here's just a couple more snapshots of my dad's truck, just walking around the truck here, taking some snapshots, just really showing off the unbelievably narrow depth of field that you can get with the lens like this. There's just another one. And look at how these bouquet balls render. They look fantastic. And you'll see a lot more examples of that in these sample photos, as you can see right here. There is a little bit of green on the bouquet ball there, just so you're aware. A little bit of green fringing here and there. Now here's just a landscape shot. I was looking through these weeds. I thought it came out pretty good. I actually stopped the lens down to like F5.6 for this shot and you can see the sharpness, clarity, color is phenomenal. Now here's just another snapshot from right next to where that previous shot was, and the lighting kind of really sucked for this particular shot. Now check this out. It's unbelievable, right? That depth of field play you can get with this lens is, is just insane. Now again, I just wanted to show you um, in the high contrast areas up here, there is a little bit of purple fringing. Let me go to 300. All right, so at 300, you can see the purple fringing and the green a little bit, 
But again, this is wide open at f0.95. So if you stop the lens down, that will go away. You know, if you stop it down to like f1.4, for example, almost all of that will be gone. But in super high contrast situations, you will notice it a little bit when zoomed in, but you can't really see it when looking at it from this view. Here's another snapshot, just walking down the road. Nothing crazy. 35 millimeter view of things. Here's a nice landscape photo I took the other day down at Fallsburg Falls. I was happy with how that came out. Here's just an image. I was reviewing the Sony ZV-E10 here and I took a couple of shots here I just wanted to take for my thumbnail images. I actually ended up using this one and I added the lettering in Photoshop. But just look at how awesome this image came out. Here it is without the lettering just so you can get a better idea. So I cropped in just a little bit. But you see how dreamy it looks and a lens like this will really produce unique results and very unique renderings and I particularly like how that came out. Now check out this one of Jasmine on my couch. She's just a cutie as you can see here. Here's another one. And look at that depth of field play is just remarkable and you can see the depth of field right here like the line. That's like the depth of field. It's so narrow. It's like two inches maybe. I had to babysit my parents dogs the other day. Here's Sophie. Sophie's the older one. And here's just another one. She's like, come on, pet me, please. Please give me pets. Now, here's one just outside. I was playing with the kids, have my coffee cup mug here. And you can again see that background rendering. You can see that little bit of green fringing, once again, in the super high contrast areas. Here's just one of Layla pointing at something amazing, obviously. I don't know what she was pointing at, I can't remember. Now, here's just one of some leaves. And this one rendered interesting. Just look at the background. It's like all these, like, bubbly looking uh, bouquet balls and then here I focused you could see the leaf very very narrow depth of field there and here's just another one again very narrow depth of field I focused on this rock over here here's one of a leaf in my hand and you can just see that depth of field is unbelievable some flowers at my neighbor's house these are Paula's flowers they were very pretty took a couple snapshots here's one of Layla and there's the kids petting the cat and I like how the depth of field play here with the walkway kind of leads the eye right in. And there's one more. Now the cat's coming towards me. It wanted me to give it some pets. But then when I went to pet it, it ran away and sat on the rock over here. So you know how cats are. They always like to tease you. Here's just one of my um, RC cars. And just look at this depth of field. I mean, it looks so 3D. Great for product photography, a lens like this. I really like the way that this rendered. And here's just a really low light shot. Me and Layla carved some pumpkins. Jace wasn't really feeling it. It's a cool bat. And Layla's witch stirring some uh, whatever. Here's one of Jace playing on the couch. Now, believe it or not, this shot, it was really dark. It was really dark in my house when I took this shot. Just the TV was lighting them up. Um, but the exposure came out um, it looking like it was much brighter than it actually was. But this was very low light. Um, like I said, it was extremely dark in the house, but because this aperture is so fast, I was able to get a, a relatively low ISO. It's only ISO 500. And that's just incredible because of the super fast max aperture. Helps keep those ISO numbers down. Here's one more. And here's just a shot over in Warwick, New York. I was heading to my favorite restaurant, Eddie's Roadhouse with my brother. This is actually my brother here on the left. And check this out. Look at this super high contrast scene. I actually made it black and white because I thought it looked so cool in black and white. It's kind of like timeless. And here's what it looked like originally, straight off the camera. I exposed for the highlights, knowing that I wanted to make this black and white. So I just raised the shadows a little bit. Now here's just a little bit of depth of field play. This is the candy store on the left, and Eddie's Roadhouse is across the street on the right here, out of focus. And uh, just rendered incredible, in my opinion. Here's just another one again. I focused on the mailbox and you can just see that background defocus just looks so cool here's one of the street crossing thing i actually just pressed it i was waiting but what i wanted to show you was these cool bouquet ball renderings in the background really rendered excellent now inside the restaurant they had a couple of decorations here so i just focused on the skull and this is at 0 0.95 so the depth of field is extremely narrow it's like right there is where i pretty much focused but look at that background. Look at how the bar renders. And there's Eddie. That is Eddie himself. That is the man. Anyway, look at this killer IPA. It was delicious. Here's another one. It says trick or treat on the uh, thing. I just wanted to show you the background bouquet balls up here. Look amazing. 
And here's one where the bartender is in the scene and you can see her jewelry. I think she's wearing a watch or something. And it just renders so cool. Now I got this burger that was absolutely remarkable. Here's one shot, here's another shot. I like this one a little bit better. And uh, it was had chicken cutlets for the bun, pulled pork, uh, unbelievably delicious burger, Gouda cheese. It had some um, pickled coleslaw or pickled cabbage, I believe that is. And then it also had salami on there. Oh man, it was unbelievable. Garlic aioli and all that. I absolutely loved it. It was definitely one of the best new things I've had in a while. That's for sure. It was remarkably good. So here's just another one. I just wanted to show you what F0.95 versus F5.6 looks like. And you can see it right here. This is F5.6 and this is F0.95. Now, if you notice here on the bottom left, you could see a stack of, of uh, the coasters. See that? But when it's rendered at 0.9, they almost disappear at 0.95. Now, if I zoom in, you could see I focused right here on the tap spigots and watch what happens when I stop it down. You can see how the bottles in the background start to become more in focus and stuff. Here's just another one looking at the taps. It's telling us about business and whatnot. And here's just one more. And here's just one more. And just, again, look at how sharp, I mean, unbelievable clarity and uh, quality. And I was just hand-holding using manual focus with the focus magnify tool, as I showed you earlier. Now, me and my brother went to this orchard quick. It was like an apple orchard slash wine tasting type place. But check this thing out. It's really cool. It's large. It's really big. It's like six, seven feet tall. <laughs> And next to it had this incredible landscape. Look at this landscape. This is actually an HDR image, so I combined three exposures to get this result. I was really happy with how that came out. Now here is another frame. Now this, I just wanted to show you what it looked like because I took three exposures. Here's one, here's another one, and here's the other one. So these are the three exposures I took using the bracketing feature and the combined result looks like this. So that's the HDR final product. So that is it for the sample photos, guys. Let's wrap this review up. All right, guys, so as you can see from the tons of real world sample photos and video that I got with this lens, that is a phenomenal optic. I highly recommend it. It's really, really good quality and it's very easy to use because of that super long focus throw on the manual focus ring. And it's super buttery smooth too. The optical quality is very, very good. It is a little bit soft at uh, 0.95 of course, but if you're a couple feet away from your subject, you don't even really notice as you can see from the sample photos I showed you. If you're at the minimum focus distance, then you are gonna see that softness a little bit. So in those cases, I would definitely stop it down to like F1.2, F1.4, but in general, um, what a really great lens, a lot of fun to use. And if you're in the market for a super high quality optic, but you don't need autofocus or you're willing to dabble with manual focus, this is a great lens to consider in my opinion for that unbelievably fast max aperture. So for low light applications, this is a great option. And uh, again, if you're into video and you're looking for like a cine lens at a reasonable price, um, this lens is really good because the focus breathing is really not that much. I expected it to be more. Um, so it's pretty good in that regard. And again, with that super long focus throw, you can dial in your focus and really get it exactly perfect very easily, especially using the tools like the focus magnify and focus peaking tool that the Sony cameras offer. So, all right, guys, that is about it. I really hope you got what you were looking for. And please be sure to do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up if you thought this review was helpful. And I will catch up with you next time. All right, guys, if you have any questions, be sure to ask below the video, and I'll be happy to try and help you out. All right, I will catch up with you later. Take care.